Hello! This video is going to be comparing two population proportions and this first part, part one, is going to be about the interval, finding the confidence interval. And then part video, the second part, will be a separate video, but the same scenario and same numbers will be about the hypothesis test. Okay. And um, for those of you who happen to have read the book, we're not pooling. All right, so according to a 2013 American Community Survey brief based on the U.S. Census Bureau, 11.6% of whites were below the poverty line, whereas 23.3% of Hispanics were below the poverty line. A researcher wants to know if the poverty rates in her local region follow the same trends. She takes random samples in her local region and finds that 326 of the, ni of the 2,976 whites surveyed were below the poverty line, whereas 804 of the 3,214 Hispanics were below the poverty line. So we're going to check assumptions or conditions, and then we're going to find the confidence interval for the difference in the two population proportions, uh, PWPH, that follow for her, the researcher's region. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do our labeling. So the trait is um, whether a, someone's below the poverty line or not. So there's the yes-no trait. And that's why we're measuring with a proportion. Right? And then we now have two populations, the population of whites and the population of Hispanics. Okay. So here, when you start labeling, you want to you want to use subscripts. So in this case, this is the sample size, n, but for the whites. And then what you would say the p hat or the sample proportion for whites would be 326 out of 2,976. And then in for Hispanics here you have the sample size for the Hispanics and then the 804 over the um, 3,214, that's the sample proportion for Hispanics. But notice, you really do want to keep these, instead of using one and two like I have on the overview sheet, you want to use the subscripts that are pertinent to your particular scenario. Sorry for the interruption. That's real life. Um, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and start setting up our info box then. So our info box. Okay, and um, maybe for organization you might want to say something like um, white versus Hispanic. Although you really don't have to be this organized, but eh, couldn't hurt, right? So the sample size for the whites is um, 2,967, and the sample proportion we found for the whites was um, 326 over 2,967, which is 11%. And then for the Hispanics, the sample size was 3,214. And the sample proportion for Hispanics was 804 over 3,214, so it came out to be 25%. Now, <clears throat> there, we're being asked for 98% confidence intervals, so we can look up the in the t-table here. What you'd want to do is, here's your degrees of freedom on the left-hand side, and then your confidence intervals on the bottom here. When you're talking about a proportion, you're talking about a normal curve. So uh, you want to use the degrees of freedom of infinity. So right here on this bottom line, right, I'm going to read across until I get to 98%. And there's my multiplier, 2.326, right there. Okay. So let me write that in there. <clears throat> 98%. Confidence interval Z multiplier would be 2.326. Okay. All right. Now, if you're using your, let's see, let's go ahead and check conditions here. So conditions for part A, uh, independent. Probably the quickest and easiest thing to do is say N sub H is... 3,214 and 
and sub W is 2,967. These are less than 10% of all Hispanics. And whites, respectively. Of course, you could say one white or Hispanic person being below the poverty line won't affect another. Oops, one white or one Hispanic person being below the poverty level. Won't affect whether another one is. And now when you do representative sample, you have to check both sample sizes. So you have to say, okay, if we're talking about, let's say, Hispanics versus whites. Okay. And so some are going to be below the poverty line. And some are not. Okay. Okay. So we're told that uh, 800 and four Hispanics are below the poverty line out of the 3,214. So here you have 2,410. So basically this is more than 10. This is more than 10. And again, for the whites, you have 326. And then 2,967 minus 326 is 2,641. So this is more than 10. This is more than 10. Usually I'll just put a big greater than 10 for all of it. And this is random sampling. So now that we've checked conditions, if you're using your master overview, then what you'd be saying, asking yourself is again, what's the trait? It's a yes, no trait. You either are or you're not below the poverty line. Then is it a confidence interval hypothesis test? So you're here, yes, no trait, confidence interval hypothesis test, confidence interval on the top, hypothesis test on the bottom. So we're here at the top. And now we're talking about two samples because we have two populations. So we're looking here, this is my general equation, p hat 1 minus p hat 2 plus or minus z times the standard error, p, standard error of p hat 1 minus p hat 2. And again, your, my standard error formula is below here, so this is the standard error formula I'm using, we're not pooling. And then we looked up the z uh, in the t table, right, the degrees of freedom were infinity and we crossed it with the 98% confidence level. So let's go ahead then and look at that start setting this up. So we're going to have to find our standard error, so let's kind of do that. We'll do that underneath the info box here. So the standard error of p hat whites minus p hat uh, Hispanic is going to be the square root of p hat white times 1 minus p hat white over sample size for the whites plus p hat Hispanic Oop, 1 minus p hat Hispanic over the sample size for the Hispanic. All right. Now filling this in, we'd have 0.11, 1 minus 0.11 over 2,967 plus 0.25, 1 minus 0.25 over 32.14. And you should get 0 0.0095569, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to go ahead and round to... 0.01, but you could be more precise if you'd like, right? This 9 rounds this 0 to 1, 0 0.01. All right, so from our then uh, master overview, we saw that what we'd want to do for a 98% confidence interval, we would say uh, p hat white minus p hat Hispanic, right? We're finding the difference in the sample proportions and adding or subtracting a margin of error. Now, I'm writing this formally. Really, all of this is just standard error. Right? We could just say standard error. When I'm writing all this in the parentheses, I'm telling you what I'm taking the standard error of. So really, everything that's in the parentheses is still part of the name of standard error. Right? You're not really supposed to put any values in here. It's just telling you what, it, what kind of standard error are you taking, because there's several standard error formulas. 
Okay. So now let's fill everything in. From our info box here, we can see that P hat W is going to be 11%, so I'm going to put in 11% in here. P hat H is 25%, so minus 0.25. And then plus or minus, my Z is 2.326. And I calculated our standard error to be 0.01, so we're going to get ahead and put 0.01 here. Now, so doing this part of the subtraction here, I'm going to get 0.14. And then plus or minus, uh, we'll just 2.326 times 0.01. And now when you do this arithmetic, you're going to get negative 0.163 to negative 0.117. And on a number line, what this looks like then is both of these numbers are negative. So here's 0, and you have like negative 11, well, 11.117, 11 11.7%. And then over here, negative 0.163. And we're saying that this difference between the proportion of whites and the proportion of Hispanics who are below the poverty line is somewhere in here. It's somewhere in here. Well, obviously, zero is not captured, right? To capture zero, you have to go from a negative to a positive number. We went from a negative to a negative. So there's definitely a difference. So zero, not captured. And there is a difference between the two populations, right? All right, so now to figure out how do I know which one's higher, the higher percent, you really need to just think about, again, how you subtracted. We set up, or I set up, whites minus Hispanics. Okay, and I got all negative differences. Now remember, for me to get negative differences, it must mean that the second quantity is bigger than the first, and it just goes back to simple... Uh, rules of subtraction, if I have something like 9 minus 12 and I get a negative 3, the reason I got a negative 3 is because this quantity, the second quantity, was bigger than the first. So it must be, for, for me to get all negative values, that this second quantity is bigger than this one. So what I know is the Hispanics, there's more, right, there's more Hispanics below the poverty line than whites below the poverty line. So now when I write my uh, statement, I say, with a 98% confidence, okay, 11.7% uh, to 16.3%. And remember, for your audience, you want to give the smaller number first and then the larger. It's just easier for somebody to understand. So with a 98% confidence, 11.7 to 16.3% more Hispanics, right, because it is, more Hispanics are below the poverty line, okay, than whites in the researcher's uh, local region. Okay. Now, another thing I just want to mention is even though I got negative percents here for my calculations, when I, I don't want to use negative percents in my sentence. Again, that's uncomfortable for people. So remember, the word more takes over. I, are, I know which group has a higher percentage of the, that are in the poverty, uh, below the poverty line. So you want to leave these numbers positive, and the word more takes care of what we need to, in terms of knowing the relative differences between the two groups. Okay. Now I just want to do a slight extension here, because I set up the problem as p hat w minus p hat h, but I could have done it the other way around. So I'm going to reverse the order of subtraction. And so here I'm going to have for a 98% confidence interval, I'm going to say p hat uh, h minus p hat w plus or minus c times the standard error. And again, even though we have here, um, technically you would want to say p hat uh, h minus p hat w, remember that the formula itself this is just the name of it. The formula itself is you're adding 
your two things, and it doesn't matter what order you add them in, whether I add this one first and then that one, or I do this one first and then add that one, you're going to get the same value. So it doesn't immediately matter that I change the name a little bit. The result will be the same. All right, so then when we go to our <clears throat> info box, we have here that the Hispanics, 0.25, whites, 0.11, plus or minus 2.326 times 0.01. All right, our standard error. And notice that there, these numbers are exactly the same numbers we had before. So here the only difference is we're going to get a positive 14. Uh, oops, 326 times 0.01. Yeah. So we're going to get instead positive 11.7 to positive 16.3. Uh, so of course they're all the same numbers. The only difference instead of negatives, we're going to get positives. So now I'm going from a positive to a positive. And again, on a number line, what that looks like is here's 0, here's somewhere 0.117 and 0.163. And I'm saying the difference is here somewhere. Now, how does that change, or does it change our conclusion? Well, again, you still you know that 0 is not captured. So you need to figure out which, which group is higher, which group is lower. So because I set up p hat h minus p hat w and I got all positive differences the first quantity must be bigger than the second because it goes back to again subtraction if I have 12 minus 9 is positive 3 it's positive because the first quantity is bigger than the second so for me to get all positive differences which they all are positive it's got to be because this quantity is bigger than that one the first quantity is bigger than the second so but again we get to the same conclusion that there's more Hispanics right so there are more Hispanics than whites that are below the poverty line. So it's the same conclusion, so you'd write the same sentence. Now, if you'd like, you can write this sentence where you say, uh, with a 98% confidence, 11.7 to 16.3 fewer whites are below the poverty line than Hispanics. It means the same thing. I mean, it's, you know, just a different way of saying it, but both are fine. All right. So that concludes this video. Thank you for listening.